Okay, now, here's a planet, and I've indicated an elliptical orbit here, uh, with the planet at the focus of the ellipse. Now, I'm not sure I drew that very well, but yeah, that at least depicts the idea. Um, okay, so the center of the planet is at the focus of this elliptical orbit. And I'm going to say that no matter where a mass is, the torque exerted by the gravitational force, which is the only force acting on an orbiting mass, assuming it's far enough out that it's not interacting with the atmosphere or anything else, um, the torque exerted by this force is zero. Okay, why is that? Because your R vector, the vector from the center of the planet to the mass, is in the direction equal and opposite to that of the net force. Now, it doesn't matter whether it's equal uh, or equal and opposite. The conclusion is that um, the net force is zero, uh, that the torque is zero. Uh, you can see this in any number of ways if you want to think of the fact that the moment arm uh, is the distance of closest approach of the line of this force to the center of the planet, well, the line of this force goes through the center of the planet. That distance is zero. Your torque is therefore going to be zero. Um, if you do it as a cross product, R cross F net, um, in the first place you might consider you have no idea in what direction to move your thumb. You can cross R toward F net from any direction since they are both along the same line. So there's no unique direction for the cross product. Of course, you can also consider that the magnitude of the cross product is equal to the product of the magnitudes of the two vectors times the sine of the angle between them. And the angle between them is 180 degrees. Sine of 180 degrees is zero. So no matter how you look at it, the planet exerts no torque on, an, on any object. Now, no gravitational torque on any object, uh, meaning then that, well, how much change do you have in angular momentum? Now, we're going to use L for angular momentum. That's not a universal notation, but it's a pretty common one. That's the one we're going to use here. Um, so the change in angular momentum is what? It's just equal on any interval, on any time interval, it's equal to the net torque times delta T. Well, of course, if the net torque is zero, you get no change in angular momentum. Another way of just understanding it intuitively, if you don't have a torque, your angular momentum doesn't change any more than if you don't have a net force. Um, your acceleration of a, a, a translating object doesn't change. <coughs> so that's always for any um, time interval, so that always the angular momentum of this orbit is always the same. So L equals I omega is constant. Now since I equals mR squared, you know, your axis of rotation is the you know, center of the Earth perpendicular and so forth to the plane of the orbit. Um, you draw all the conclusions that lead to Kepler's laws, and I'm not going to go through the details of those. I'll let you uh, look them up. Um, but one consequence is that if you get, for example, oh, we just use this as a ballpark. If you get twice as close, what happens to your moment of inertia? Okay, well, if the same mass gets twice as close, r squared becomes one fourth as great. You got one fourth the moment of inertia, and since i times <coughs> omega is constant, and omega stays in the same plane, and all that stuff, uh, this means that omega has to become four times as great. So, think about that. Also, you know, kind of relate that to the answer to this question. <coughs>